right, so let's see what happens now when we start adding some strong acid and strong base to the buffer. How is that going to change the pH? It shouldn't change it very much, but it, if you add an acid, the pH should go down a little bit. If you add a base, the pH should go up a little bit. And there's like a two-step process to figure out, to calculate the new pH. So here, if you're adding a strong acid, the, remember what's going to happen. The strong acid will react with the weak base, and you're going to get a weak acid. And if down here, if you add a strong base, that'll react with the weak acid to give you a weak base. And some other stuff. Sometimes you'll end up with water on the other side, you'll end up with um, maybe a salt. Those things aren't going to affect the pH, so you're only, like, if you got a neutral salt. Um, so you only really care about, about how much strong acid are you starting off with, how much weak base, how much weak acid. This is part of your buffer, right? The weak acid, weak base, that's the buffer part. They're going to give you those, those concentrations or those moles, and then you're going to figure out how much gets used up, and so on and so forth. So the first thing you want to do is uh, determine how the neutralization reaction is going to affect the amount of weak acid and weak base, and then you just have to plug it into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So it makes a little more sense when you see it um, worked out as an example. So we have a buffer is made by adding 0.3 moles of acetic acid and 0.3 moles of sodium acetate. So the first thing you want to do is figure out who's the acid, who's the base, and when you look at these, they didn't give you the names this time, I, I said them, but they didn't give you the names. Um, this has a COOH group, this guy does not have an H, so this is the acid and this one is the base. That's really important, if you, if you mess that up then uh, your numbers are going to be backwards. Uh, and they give you the pH of the buffer that, this time and they're asking you to find the pKa. Um, so if, if that was what the buffer looked like, that's great. We could just use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation right away. We didn't add our, in part B and part C, we're going to add some strong um, acids and strong bases. So pH equals pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. And we're looking for the pKa. So we know the pH. They told us the pH, right? The pH of the buffer is 4.74 equals the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. So the base concentration, or we have three moles, and it's in a one liter solution, so, sorry, we have a 0.3 moles in a one liter, so that's 0.3 molar over 0.3 molar for base over the acid. This is one, the log of one is just zero, so in this case the pH just equals the pKa, so that makes it nice and easy. pKa is just equal to 4.74. So if you do that in your calculator, log of one, you get zero. Okay, now for the new part. Calculate the pH of the solution after you add 0 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so this is a strong base. So the strong base is going to react with the weak acid and I'm going to make some weak base. So that's what I need to figure out. I'm starting off with 0 0.020 moles of my um, strong base and my weak acid up here, my, this is this is weak stuff, right? This is my buffer. It's made of a weak acid and a weak base. Um, so I have 0.3 moles of my weak acid. 0.3 moles of my weak acid and I have some I have 0.3 moles of my weak base. So I have weak acid and weak base to start off with. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to use up all of the strong stuff. So I subtract all the strong stuff. If I use up uh, for every one mole of the strong base I use up, it's going to react with one mole of the weak acid. I'm going to make one mole of the weak base. So I'm going to subtract, subtract, and then add. So always look at the strong stuff. The strong stuff is what's going to be subtracted. You're going to use that up completely because you have less of it. You have 0.02 moles of that. Once you use up 0.02 moles, this reaction is, is done. So I'm going to subtract 0.02, and then on this side I'm going to add 0.02. So on this side I get 0.280, you can use a calculator for this part, 0.320. And so now I have my new um, weak acid and weak base. These are, it's in moles, but that's fine because it's in a one liter solution and I'm not changing the volume at all. So um, I can plug moles right into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. I don't have to divide it by one. It's going to be, it's going to give me the same number. That's always going to work. So now I can plug this into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Let's do this in blue. pH equals pKa, which we knew the pKa. We found it in part um, A, 4.74. So in part A, sometimes they'll give you the pKa and they ask you for the pH. Sometimes they'll give you the pH, they'll ask you for the pKa. That can change. This is not always going to be the same question. So you have to read the question. pH equals pKa 
plus the log of the base over the acid. So we're going to use our new acid and base concentration log of the base over the acid, so point, point 0.320 over 0 0.280. And so when you work all of this out, you should get a pH of about 4.8. Okay, so this pH kind of makes sense because originally they told you when you just made up the buffer and you had 0.33 moles of acetic acid, 0.3 moles of sodium acetate, the pH was 4.74. And so when you added the base, the pH went up a little bit. It became more basic, which makes sense. So make sure when you're comparing the pHs, you're not looking at the pKa, you're looking at the pH. In this case, the pKa was the pH, so um, that's fine if you made that mistake this time around. In part C, now we're looking at what happens when you add a strong acid. So if you add a strong acid, that's going to react with the weak base, and you're going to make some weak acid. Go back to your original um, concentrations. Don't worry about what happened in part B. Um, strong acid, we're adding 0 0.020, and go back to your initial. So go all the way back up to the, to the starting point if you had 0 0.3 moles of each. So don't worry about what happened here. Part B and Part C are not really related. 0 0.30 and 0 0.30. And when you look at these numbers, you're going to think they look pretty similar. So I'm subtracting, subtracting, and then I add over here. The difference now, if you see the difference, this had the weak acid going to the weak base. This is the weak base going to a weak acid. So I end up with 0.28 and 0.30. 3, 2. And when I plug that into the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, I get pH equals pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. And I end up with 4.68, which is slightly more acidic, so that makes sense as well. So when you add the acid, the pH should go down. So I'm comparing it to 4.74. Um, you can pause the video and try to do this one on your own. It's the same situation. You have a buffer a buffer solution of 0.12 molar ammonium, and then you have the uh, ammonia and the ammonium chloride. Um, this is your acid. It has an NH4. This is NH3. That's a base. And they give you a KB this time. We don't want a KB. We want to find the pKa. So you need to convert, remember, Ka times KB is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So the first thing you want to do is find that Ka, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 14, divided by the Kb, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. That should give you like 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10. That's your Ka. And then if you want to find the pKa, negative log of that. which gives you 9.255. I'm going to carry out an extra sig fig on this one. I don't know why. I just did. So pH equals, now I have the pKa. So the first step you had to find was the pKa. If you want to find the pH, you need to know the, P, the pKa. pH is pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. And this is the base, 0.12 over the acid, 0.10. So when you work that out, I end up with like 9.33 as my pH. All right. Um, so make sure you identify the acid and the base. Uh, this was a little tricky this time because they give you a Kb, so you have to find the Ka and then find the pKa. So there's a couple steps you had to do in that first, first step there. And now what they want to know is what happens when you add um, some strong base. So the strong base is going to react with the weak acid, and you're going to make some weak base. That's the generic form of that. If you want to write out the whole reaction, you can certainly do that as well. I'm starting off with 0 0.0050 moles of my strong base, and then I go up here and I find my weak acid and weak base concentration. So my weak base was 0.12, and my weak acid was 0.10. So they don't have to be the same. They should be pretty, pretty close. That's what makes a good buffer. So now I'm going to subtract the 0.005 
subtract the 0 0.005 and add the 0 0.005 on this side. So I, I use up all of my strong stuff. And 0 0.095 and 0 0.125. And now I can figure out my the rest of my equation here. So my pH equals the pKa, which I found in the first step here, right? This guy, 9.255 plus the log of the base over the acid. I got 9.37. So when you add that strong base, the pH goes up, becomes a little more basic. You can do the same thing for uh, in part C, where you have a strong acid. And here you have your strong acid. It's going to react with the weak base. And you're going to make a weak acid. Uh, the strong base is 0 0.005. The weak base, again, go back up to the initial conditions. Weak base was 0 0.12, and weak acid was 0 0.1. So this is 0 0.1. This is 0 0.12. Subtract subtract and then add so when you work those out you get these numbers and then you can plug that into the Henderson Hasselbeck equation again and you get pH equals the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid which comes out to be 9 0.29, which is less than what we started with. So we added some acid, the pH went down. Originally the pH was 9.33, added some base, it went up to 9.37, added some acid, it went down to 9.29.